G'day punters, welcome to uh, another episode of the Deep Dive. Pistol Pete, Anthonis and I will uh, take you through predominantly the Flemington meeting. Um, headquarters, what they race on in the end, Peter? Soft five, they're calling it. Um, yeah. Some real varying tempos, which given the microscope we were under with the stratosphere, uh, graced me up a little bit more, which I'm not lending a lot of help with, as you might be able to see there, punters, a fair bit of grey coming through. A uh, couple popped out on Saturday afternoon and it's Monday morning now and a few more have just found their way through. When I look at, considering we backed Kura made to win 100000 and probably saved the day for, for the bank um, and to see the horse has gone eight lengths slower to the 600 than it did at its previous start, clocked the fastest uh, eight to the six, six to the four inside the race and just and then still was pretty solid on the way home, just couldn't get there uh, given that the... the really slow tempo of the race also uh, in that race late we backed Albert who no surprise to me but let's get out of the way early you look in the stewards report race race nine fun as the the novel that is the stewards report not a mention of Albert at all uh, I'll go on now to my punningform.com.au uh, database punningform.com to do sectional times what we use you should be using uh, yep it's the furthest it's ever settled back almost in its life um, it settled settled back uh, second up this preparation it was a good freshen in this preparation so it's, that's a long preparation but yeah much further back much colder and most importantly a lot slower to the 600 um, really disappointing ride on it the lack of intent um, disappointed both rides disappointed with stewards and uh, going back I, I think we, we bet okay in that race um, we look through the day, uh, bet regret, probably Prezado. Um, I was just talking to Pistol before. We were just yarning, as we do. I think if this horse was a little bit later in the day and we were sort of into our work a little bit more, a little bit looser, maybe we sort of pull the trigger here. Um, at that point into the market, race one, there's already a lot of sort of dollars had been spent for the, for the punters. But even for my punters, oh, I thought it would win. I was cons- nervous of the the, the the next three horses in the finish, actually. Um, top of head, they were from within, Stitzcraft and all over Boston over. Um, but the 1,000-metre horse, the track and trip horse, was just too strong. Well, what did you I regret that, not actually? betting there. Just the, the, the betting Which, late on Prezado. Like it was pretty cold in the last couple of minutes there. It went from $2.42 out to a high of two fifty eight. Fair amount of cash laid just, against it. I think it's just the market was much like myself, like probably wins, but what price is it? Yeah. It was very, very short. Um, last start, Presado had SP'd uh, $7 versus like from within 750 and all over Boston over eight. So, you know, the SP profiles out there of which the sort of pros are, you know, respectful of big time. It is too short. And they walked here, which I don't think suits the horse, and it still is just too strong late. Its last six hundred is just sexual to the to the clock. Yeah. Um, it's just it was too good. Race two, um, yeah, we spoke about this bit on the stream. Really looking back, shits me that this horse, like a big odds has won mm. in a race where we didn't want to back anything or off paper. Which means, as the way Pete and I operate as mounting yard judges, and we had a good comment on that, Pete, which we'll talk about straight after this. Yeah. About how how we're surviving and how we like we lost our biggest edge. So, race two is the perfect example of a race where I, I would go there with with no fear of backing any single runner, if it walked, grouse looked really well, ticked all the boxes that I like to see from a parade. Um. Yeah, a large part of the decisions we make are based on you know, a number of factors and the amount of yards just the final one, right? So with the horse like Prezado, you just have, we have a nice profile on that horse and if it's mm. maintaining that sort of prep, uh, prep uh, not, if it's looking as it was the last couple of starts, then it's probably going to run as it's run the last couple of starts. So you can have another, it might, might have given you that final bit of confidence to pull the trigger at that short price. In a race like this, this would have been a really good opportunity. We didn't see this horse parade because um, .com doesn't do that anymore, but the it just would you know it, it could have been a sort of bet we could have found two year olds 
two-year-olds and three-year-olds, the lighter race they are, the bigger edge we have from the yard. Um, I spoke to Pete about this a few times, didn't I, before the day started. I said, race two is really open. If we can try and catch a glimpse of these things on the TV, we might yep. better have it. a good better one here at a good price. Um, it's obviously, for myself, it's been really, really difficult and just getting harder to try and keep going. Like we've, we've lost a significant edge, which we're going to get back. Um, from a personal point of view, like as a, as a pro, um, I suppose we're, we're, I'm trying to use the time to perfect other sides of my game and also perfecting the, the, the sheets and stuff we've built to, that we use when we go back to the yard. So when we, as soon as we get back there, everything's sort of humming. You? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a, a really good point. And we had the, the question almost a couple of times on the stream. Um, you know, a few people sort of wondering why I was so readily to dismiss a couple of races at both Randwick and, and Belmont. It's almost a case of at the moment, because we're, we're losing that little bit of a mounting out aspect, you're almost even further prepared to just completely pen a race. If you're not liking the way it's setting up, if you're not able to get the map right, if you think there's something iffy in terms of the overall data for a lot of the horses setting up into the race, you can just easily put a line through it. Um, whereas typically if you're on course, we might've been able to find a, a smaller bet or one at odds for a horse that maybe had some moderate push from a data angle but then all of a sudden had a really impressive yard parade. So for me at this stage, it's not really a case of reducing turnover significantly. It's just a case of when I'm betting, I'm actually betting a little bit more uh, aggressively than what I would be doing otherwise. Um, But from that point of view, it's just aim small, miss small. I have to use that. Yeah. Patriot. Well, like rule number one of the mailbag is never force it. Don't force it. There's always another race and, I think we've done really well so far through the through the COVID, and I don't think it's a lot lot longer to go. So we've survived. Um, no doubt, it's like sharpened our sort of form side of our game. Um, you know, I was pretty happy with how we bet or how I bet it at Flemington. Um, we'll continue on, I suppose, going through some of my bets and uh, some of the performances. Race four, they've got a good gallop, and this Honey Esprit's run a big time. I'll quickly just have a look at us. I suspect it's near a peak for its entire life. Um, I thought the track, Pete, played probably not how we anticipated. Yeah. I yep. thought the track played really, really evenly. We sort of anticipated and hoped for sort of rail off uh, on on speed, maybe not suited. I think it was really fair. This horse led rail. Um, it has run out the biggest figure of its career. Um, Snowy was in the house. Is Clint McDonald's man. Clinton McDonald wasn't even tipping it. So they didn't know. No one knew. And hence, it's SP probably 50s plus on the fair. Mm. Um, but big performance. And to, to, it properly grade me up when this thing won because, you know, we were starting to be anti. I was trying to be sort of anti leaders per hand the previous race. Um, we backed and sort of settled 1 1 and we backed it in Flanders at this rain. Yep. Um, Per Sands a nice horse worth following. Um, it's good to get on the board. Took a fair bit of the, fair bit of the pressure off, and then we backed race five. We backed um, Music Bay, which I'm convinced would have led. Don't know if it would have won, but it would have got the same run as the winner. Um, good ride, Chris Caserta. Um, good on him. Blah blah blah. But race five, decent figure. They've all just sort of capitulated late. Um, Chapada. I think maybe I took, I know I backed the winner here, but there's some factors in how really the horse wins that when I look back now, maybe I'll sort of overbet here a bit. Um, if that it probably doesn't make sense to anyone. Does that make sense to you even, Peter, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it does. You can still get the, the right result, but in hindsight, it was the, maybe not the wrong play, so to speak, because it's hard to call it the wrong play when you get the right result. But um, potentially the the way you came to the conclusion might have been a bit off, but anyway, run through it. What were you thinking? I was thought that it came out of the right races. It was ready to peak. Yep. Uh, I thought it would get a much softer run than it got. Uh, if I bet into the race, I had to be on it as a result. Um, the race was an utter mess, like completely chaos. Like just how slow they went and then they picked up. 
if I had it gone quicker, I think if you're back Masaf or Masif, whatever we're calling it, you're probably pretty stiff. Uh, but at the same time, top of the straight, Masif had this thing, had Shapata's back and had every right to run over it. I just think the, the Rapture race, two starts back at Flemington's a proper form reference. Mm. The Super Titus race, a uh, couple of, uh, like last start, Super Titus is putting together a really, really uh, proper little run of races. I just thought it, it was ready to win. I thought uh, Sin to win, who we also back, is flying. Uh, I think Ollie's ride was outstanding, given the ridiculous like, slowdown in the mid-race. Uh, I was happy you know, at top of straight. You know, we, we had the sort of Sin to win presenting. Didn't think it would, it would stop. Just needed a more dynamic horse over top of it if there was one. And thankfully, we were on it. And it was Shapata. But... Uh, I think in hindsight, you're probably like we took sort of five dollars of each, maybe top ahead. Probably it's more like an eight dollar chances. Yep. But yeah, got the result. Um, what else should we talk about? Pistol. Oh, God, I don't want to talk about Credence. It can just yeah, fuck right off that horse. <laughs> Shits me. Like the last time it won was at Ballarat. And before that at Pakenham, it like it's gone like not many trainers can improve them off the Hayes camp. This bloke did. Well done, Matthew Kimani. Um, I saw it coming a long way out. I don't know if I just said yelled out in the, the stream, but it sickened me. Um, is this the race where we were on Romancer? Well, that was the Vacillator race. Yeah. Vacillator, riding on the wall, ready to do something. And again, just proved how fair this track was. This thing's come from last, just about off no early tempo. They went really slow. Um, deserved the win. Big performance. Good ride, Willow. Uh, I think there's a couple of sort of specialist 400-meter horses who went good. Romance are one of them, just not good enough for us. And then in race nine, we spoke about ridiculously slow, very frustrating. How did you see Belmont, mate? Uh, look, it's... I thought it was a very, very even card. It wasn't necessarily one where I was too happy to, to jump into really launching anything. Um, you know, compared with, say, earlier in the week at Belmont and then even at Northern last week, you know, I was much happier to, to bet across both of those cards. Performance of the day, showmanship. This horse has got some serious ability. Um, it was built as a two-horse race and showmanship was probably better suited the way the day was unfolding. It was really difficult to sit there on the fence and win at Belmont. Um, showmanship managed to put itself into the race and just ridden with that little bit of extra aggression that just put them away late and absolutely killed the field. Clear best of the day performance. Uh, probably the other race of note was the Raconteur Stakes, which uh, was farcically run um, on the all average punting form benchmark, 11 lengths slow to the 600. They've gone 12.9 lengths slow for the class and on a day when it was difficult to maintain that position on the fence and win, nothing says like giving your horse a chance, like going and trying to run a 300 metre race. Um, KC first up was going to be vulnerable. And the only way it was probably going to figure in the finish is if it got a really slow run. We saw the horse under pressure coming in towards the turn, going in towards the straight. It visually looked like it was getting scrubbed. That can often be a bit of a, uh, an optical illusion because they're all going so slowly and then going from so slow to such a sprinting tempo uh, yeah. it does visually look like the horse is completely off the bit but KC is a very talented horse if you give it a slow tempo and it's shown that so far it went to Kingston Town Group 1 off a slow tempo and here it was the only way it was going to win is if it got a barrier trial and got the barrier trial complete grey up for you uh, I feel quite sick for you um even leading into the meeting, it had the potential to just be a real sort of um, mental health like red flagger. Like yep. Black Tree Caddy, what a fucking, what a thing. I was just sitting there, I didn't know what to say, whether to sort of uh, encourage you to follow your money or just you do you. Uh, and then when we weren't on and it just got the perfect run and it's just sickening, just yeah. like sick. It's, this horse should have won last start when you were on. Um, Repulsive, and then the last race, um, you spoke about how KC was blessed and just knocked off the first leg of your, your good all up, which yeah. was into Western Pride, the winner of the last. 
which would have let you be able to back the other two that you liked at odds. Yep. The three horses going for a fat, fat result. But instead, you were sort of left in this just mental hellhole of <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, it was, just, it was a pretty grey situation. But, I mean, in the end, Western Pride's returned with a figure of 2.6 lengths slow. It's awful. Uh, to the class. And the overall figure of 0.7 lengths on the all average. Now, you compare that to what it's been able to achieve so far in its career. Still yet to record a strong figure on the punting form data. In fact, its career peak was actually in its first ever start. 1.7 lengths fast overall you know it's a horse with ability but it's still yet done to yet. put the riding on the wall it's yeah. not a it's not a superstar just yet far from it yeah all right well i reckon pistol my man that might just about do us um anything worth noting from the meeting uh, not particularly at this stage i, I think obviously casey's got the the win on the board Wherever it goes over the next couple of starts, it will be well supported and well found, obviously. But there's probably going to be a few other horses that will be improving um, into some of those nice three-year-old winter features there at Belmont. Um, just looking forward to seeing the track just start to settle a little bit. We saw another meeting where the rail's been disadvantaged. It's really hard to get a, a line as to why that is. Um, but you just have to adjust on the day. Yeah, fair enough. I thought out of the Flemington meeting, uh, Asian Rook's running really well and can be followed. Outside of that, not a lot to sort of take from the meeting yet. Uh, really even, you know, trust the SPs. And if you thought a horse run good, it probably has here. Yep. Uh, each race, its own beast via the tempos. Like the, the, the speeds to the 600 varied all through the day. Um, good meeting at sale Wednesday. You knew it already. And then we're back to the valley on Saturday still. So I uh, might, might try and find a way to get in there, but we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Until next week, punters.